It's actually my next bike. <laughs> <laughs> then you got to come back on the show <laughs> and tell us because you own aluminium, steel, titanium. titanium yes. The next one will be carbon, and no, that no, usually no, no. will be the end game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone sponsor me carbon. <laughs> <laughs> you wrap the batik by yourself, ah? Uh? Yes, ugly. I'm going to change it, man. No uh, comment. But, but you know, even me, after I'm riding, wrote for all PG-18 people watching. No air. <laughs> and I have to give credit to Kelvin from Bike Settlement because I bought it from him and he was like, Hey, uh, bro, come over. I'll just he, just... he literally took one new one and he just gave me this. Serious. So I, I only needed this and because they don't sell this, right? So. To all you guys who are watching, just be very careful if you're using this kind of pump. Thanks, Kevin. If mine broke, I'll come to you. <laughs> oh shit, he's probably saying, why did, he, why did he mention me? Not everybody's coming to my shop and, and, and taking my horse. But no. yep. They're so seamless. Because it's Reynolds at 853. No, no, but but you see the new specialized Ali Sprint. <laughs> what, what's, what's up with that? I mean. <laughs> I mean, comparatively, right? Look at this, it's, it's almost as like, it's like... I, I, I did not say anything about specialized. Uh, them it's ugly, sure. What the heck? I feel so oh, offended. Oh, you are using <laughs> it. Oh, sorry, I didn't personal preference. <laughs>
uh, the reason I went for okay we talk about material first or the genre first which is the gravel uh, let's talk about genre okay genre the reason I got uh, into gravel bike specifically is because I wanted to go off-road as and when I like like for instance uh, one of my favorite route is from Punggol to Mandai and then I go through T15 and uh, Bukit Timah and then I exit and I go into rail corridor so I want to have that flexibility as and when I want yeah so which is why I got the gravel bike mm. and I was previously running on the 35 mm which I find it a bit sluggish mm. <laughs> although yeah it provide it provided me with the comfort but I down I downsized to 32 which I love a lot mm. because I can have the best of both world I can ride fast on the road I can also venture into the you know terrain off-road terrains yeah whenever I want you've never tried 25 yet then technically you're going into a road bike okay i've test road my brothers and a few of my friends bike yeah carbon bike yeah indeed the power transfer is amazing mm. no doubts about that no mm. doubts but i'm someone who goes more into comfort lah. Mm. yeah okay so the marine how long was that for and then uh we'll transition on to getting this bike uh, i think about less than six months ago and the reason for selling it off uh the the right quality is harsh because um, my, my, my body has, I mean, my body is very sensitive to inputs. Because if I don't like the ride and I don't like the way it handles, even after like I change out the tires or I play around with the tubeless and tubes and stuff, I still find ELU to be very harsh, even though it's stiffer, but no. Nah. Mm. So I go on to steel after reading so much about steel and the types of steel, Reynolds, Columbus, Tenji steels and stuff. I got this and I never turned back since. Wow. Yeah. And tell us more about this. How did you get this? Why? Uh, so for all of you who don't know already, this is a Niner RLT9 steel yep. uh, frame. The first time I came to know about Niner was quite a long time ago when... Wow, is it drizzling? No. A bit drizzling. No, no. Uh, hopefully it doesn't rain. Yeah, so the, the first time I came to know about Niner it was uh, when I was in my mountain biking days. They came out with the 29 inch precisely yes. tires uh the, the wheels right yeah famous think, for that correct yeah. then that was the only brand i knew at the time and then everyone started copying then they went to 27.5 i don't know what happened to the brand already so that's my first encounter with niner that's how i know about this but it doesn't seem to be a very popular brand now are they still alive or uh okay from what i gather uh there's not many people riding niner in singapore i mean i do bump bump into i think two person only so far one was riding the same bike but another color scheme and the other one was a 29 inch mountain bike yeah they are not popular with gravel bikes mainly primarily mountain bikes lah. you're mm, right mm. Yep. so yeah why this bike and how did you come across this bike okay the brand doesn't really affect uh, doesn't really bother me lah. Uh, but what i'm particular about is the steel material because i was actually going for either reynolds or the columbus steel yeah, because I read a lot about it, about the, the, the compliance on the road and how light it is. I mean, not as light as carbon or titanium, but it provides you that flex that translates to extreme road comfort. Lah. Mm. Uh, so when I check out the Reynolds A53, it was one of my choices actually, Reynolds A53 or Reynolds 953. 953, the titanium, titanium-like steel. Yeah, they're very difficult to get and also mm. a bit expensive. So what you're saying is the uh, the type of steel, right? Yep, matters. It matters a lot. In, in what sense does it matter? The construction of it or just the, the material itself? The construction, the butting and the joints. Yeah, yeah. Th th this is thick welded if I remember correctly. And yeah, somehow the, the, the way it translates all the road bumps onto my, my, my ass and my legs and my arms uh, is, I wouldn't say subtle, it's engaging. Like, like pe people say, steel is real. Yeah. It is what it is. Do you think titanium will be better or much more comfortable? That's actually my next bike. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got to come back on the show <laughs> and tell us because you own aluminium, steel, titanium, titanium yes. the next one will be carbon. And no, that no, usually no, no. will be the end game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone sponsor me carbon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, wow. Okay. So then, so you, you, you just went on Carousel, you were just browsing for steel frames. Uh, not. Uh, not exactly just uh, steel frames. I actually browse uh, Reynolds A53, Reynolds 953, Columbus Zona, all the specific stainless tubing that I want. Mm. Yeah, so this is one of them that came up. So I actually inquired, PM the fella, and he was very kind. He's an Australian chap. Uh, so I head over to his place, have a look, have a test ride, right? and I, you know, immediately I sense that comfort. Even like, it's like from here to there. 
I, there, there were some bumps lah. I love this man. And and it was the frame only, right? It wasn't a complete bike. Oh no, it was a complete bike, but and with a different uh, wheel set, um, bars, seat post, and saddle. So how much do you pay for it at the time when you first bought it? Uh, just below three. Okay. Was yeah. that a budget that you were looking for, or you you didn't bother about it? Uh, that was around the, my my budget lah. Right. Yeah, for a start. So if it wasn't this bike, what bike would it have? What other bikes were you looking at? To be honest, I would actually have gone for a titanium bike. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw Linsky lah, but uh, I mean there were other brands I'm considering as well. Yeah, I'm a bit picky about brands also. If right. I were to go into brands lah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's ultimately the comfort that I want lah. Comfort, right? That's yeah. why you didn't go for carbon or... Yeah, correct. Okay. So you bought this bike from the guy, uh, what components did it come with? And also the next question I want to ask was sizing. You stand sizing. at 1.71 meters, yep. and how did you know that this is the size? Uh, because he's also about the same build as me. Yeah, he's about 1.7, 1.71 as well. Mm. But yep. was inseam a, con a consideration? Inseam definitely, yes. His inseam was slightly shorter, if I recall. Yeah. Slightly shorter and his arms slightly, just a tad shorter. Lah. Not, not that much. Lah. Mm. So I knew when I set, I, 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 I put my leg over the bike and I tried. Yeah, I just need to tweak a bit here and there. So I rode it home from there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so uh, if you could run us through this current setup that you have and what did the original bike came with which what components okay the original niner came with the stance uh wheel set it's a gravel specific wheel set i, I think it's 28 yeah 20 28 mm um diameter uh yeah he had he had the wheel set running on the dt350 so i just swapped it over to this new wheel set uh and the group set was sram rival complete sram rival um two by Mm. Yeah, so uh, and the bus he had was Richie, Richie Elu, I think Elu bus, and the stock Niner stem and the Niner seat post and the Niner saddle, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Right, so quite a lot of changes that you made. Actually, everything I said. Everything. <laughs> okay, let's start one by one. Let's take it slow. Okay. So let's start with the wheels first, the main part, right? So you said you kept the hubs, yep. DT350s, yep. but you swapped out the rims. The wheel set and the, the spokes. Uh, why and what wheel, wheel sets are these? Okay, uh, actually, uh, as about the same time I bought this bike, my wife also bought another gravel bike from uh, R3 Cycles. Uh, so I was there and obviously, you know, any shop is poisonous for me. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot just walk into a shop and not buy anything. So I saw this wheel set. I, I wanted it to be in black decals, actually. Lah like stealth look but they don't have it there so i inquired and this was actually a gravel specific wheel set okay uh, gravel specific meaning the internal width is 22 or 23 if i'm not wrong and the widest point is 29 mm so you you can fit up to 47 mm tires easily mm. yeah so I, I i fell in love with it but they don't have the spokes that i want this is the sepim cx ray spokes because i wanted it to be lightweight as well but this was a 32 hole so uh, I, 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 I wasn't that knowledgeable about how many spokes and stuff back then. Lah. So after buying this, I realized this is a damn solid wheel set. But for road riding, this is not the best. Because? Uh, because of the weight. Yeah, I think this is about 1.78, if I can recall correctly, or 1.81. Mm. Yeah. And, and the tyres are extremely wide, 30mm GP5000 SDR. SDR. <laughs> yeah. How wide do these tyres go? Uh, oh, for, for this wheel set or for that previous wheel set? Uh, for this wheel set, and the GP5000 has even wider... Uh, they have 32. I wanted to get the 32. Mm. But uh, the reason I got 30 was because I wanted the side to sit flush with the external diameter. Aerodynamics? Yes, correct. <laughs> so, which is why I'm actually looking at the Polaris 42, la, if oh, you want to know. Oh, wow. Ha, ha, okay, how, sorry, how much are these wheels? Uh, no, because I only bought the... The rim. Yeah, the rim only. It was about less than 1k. Mm. Less than 1k. And... Sorry, because I'm looking at your wheels, right? Mm. I realise the... Housing of your brakes, these are not SRAM. Uh, no, that is a TRP HYRD. It's actually like a hybrid brake. So what it does is, okay, you have mechanical lever on top and you have um, hydraulic at the bottom. It's like that China brand that I did recently. Yes. What's that? I can't remember. Oh gosh. You guys know, I think. Yeah, yeah I, I saw it. I saw that it. one, right? Juin, yeah. Juin Tech. Ah, Juin Tech. Yes, yes, correct. And this is a TRT. Is it China and also? Th th this is the rival. Uh, Juin Tech rival. Oh, uh, from China? 
Ah, uh, TRP. God knows. I think it's Taiwan. I think it's Taiwan. Taiwan. I think. I think. So it's yeah. a rival. Rival. Yeah. So the my question is why this one not Dream Tech and uh, why specifically you wanted mechanical and hydraulic? Uh, oh, you know? this was already on the bike. Ah. Uh, so I never meddled with it. Tell, yeah. Tell us about the um, performance of this kind of brakes and also the modulation. Does it feel like a hydraulic brakes? Yeah, somewhat feel like. Uh, no, it's definitely better than my previous Marine lah. Yeah, like that. this one brake pad is going out, going out, yeah. <laughs> and I haven't bleed the brakes for the longest time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, if you want to talk about comparison with my pure mechanical brakes on my Marine lah, uh, this one is so much better, man. Mm. Yeah, the regula- the regulation is there, and obviously the power. Mm. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's we are done with wheels. Mm. Let's talk about group set. So SRAM rival. Yeah. Did it come with the bike? Yeah, it came with the bike, SRAM Rival. So, uh, you know, since I'm, I'm going into gravel, right? So, might as well lose some weight, shed some pounds, and I went into one bike. So, I actually swap out the actual front derailleur and the cassette to this uh, absolute black over chain ring. Mm. This is a 46 tooth over chain ring. Yes, I know. A lot of people say I'm crazy because it's huge. Because usually people run 40 or 39 mm. for gravel group set. But I want 46 because I'm going for the speed and I'm comfortable with that. And then the next question would be, people ask me, then how do you climb? I can climb. Uh. Of course, uh, I mean, a 44 would be perfect. Uh. But because I want the additional speed when I, dis- uh, when I descend, mm. yeah, or like flats, you know. So yeah, this is pretty much perfect, uh, the, the gearing setup for me. Were there, were there any times where you ran out of gears? Like you needed a bigger cassette at the back when you were climbing? Or for you- speed or for climbing? Uh, both. Because oh. it's a one bike, right? So uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I feel right now after riding this for, I think almost a year. I I think forty four will be perfect for me because right now with this, I can cruise thirty plus quite comfortably. Mm. Yeah. So with a forty four, I have that option. I I I can climb better. Right. Yeah. Uh, why oval? And does it help in any way? Uh, because simply because my foldy, I had an oval chain ring. So I, I know what kind of benefits I'm getting. It actually, um, what's the word? Mod, 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 modulate your pedaling efficiency. Yeah, Both on flat and climbs? Or? On, on flat and on climbs, yes. Okay. Yeah, I feel that difference. Lah. Okay. Yeah. Um, any issues of it dropping? So this is one of the common questions people always ask, like having oval chain, uh, oval um, chain ring, mm. does it ever fall off in or out? Have you ever experienced that? Have never fall off not even once mm. not even once yeah okay pedals mountain bike pedals shimano spds yes shimano actually SPDs. i got one more question for you have you ever brought this onto the trails into the trails yeah or is it now has it been just a fully road bike setup already oh for the past uh since i since august i stopped going to trail i focus mainly on roads then just convert bro no, I want to have two wheel set. <laughs> so this is going to be my gravel wheel set, and hopefully the Polaris Forty Two will be my road wheel set. Yeah, right. right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, because uh, sorry, forgot to ask the question. So um, yeah, why why SPDs? Not you know, uh, road road shoes. Uh, road cleats. gravel ma. <laughs> so obviously you know you go for these SPDs. But you are running a uh, road bike shoes. Uh, sorry, it's a mountain bike shoe. A uh, mountain bike shoe. Ah, uh, uh, this, this is a S mountain bike shoe. Okay, okay. Um, cool. What else are we missing? Uh, the handlebars are pretty f- flat. Like yeah, it's a gravel specific handlebar. Uh, carbon. Very uh, funny because it has like, the king. Yeah, it has that groove. So mm. in, initially, uh, I find it weird lah. But after buying and reading, after reading around and then finally purchasing it lah, uh, wow, that groove really provide comfort when you go onto the drops uh. Mm. Uh, yeah. You wrap the batik by yourself uh? Yes, ugly. I'm going to change it, man. <laughs> Don't uh, comment. But, but you know, even me, after I've riding road for so long, I uh. can't even wrap my own body properly. It looks horrible. <laughs> no, actually, I just changed this, like, uh, I think two months back. Oh. I was previously running the normal spongy one, the six mm. eight dollars because I find that good enough for me mm. because it's light. Mm. But I saw this S work body, which I couldn't resist lah, the price. So Is I just got it. Is it good? <laughs> It's comfortable, but be heavy, heavy lah. Uh, it's it bro. Okay, heavy. You say heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you are talking about a heavy bike. Oh, how heavy is your bike? Uh, last I remember was nine point nine. Nine point nine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is weight a matter because uh, do a lot of road riding, right? Yes. A uh, weight. Uh, uh, weight. Okay, weight. Suddenly, 
matters uh, whether a lot or a bit depends on the riders lah. But what most important is this one lah. The legs lah. Uh, yes, correct. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, we oh. will come there. Come to that a bit later. Yeah. Um, what else do you want to talk about? Okay, I've got a few notes here. Uh, power arc the saddle, right? Ah yeah. Um, it, what's the width of this saddle and why a power arc? Power arc is not very popular. People always get the other kind of saddles, the other S works power saddles. Ah uh, yes. Uh, okay, I've not gone for a bike fit, but based on okay, I changed saddles a lot mm. since my forty. So I think six or seven saddles. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but I managed to sell them, so it's okay. Uh -huh. So do you think there is a right saddle or it's more of like the rider just having to adapt to the saddle? Oh, saddle is a very personal thing. La. You got to not say experiment, la. you got to buy trial and error. And, but most importantly, you must know your seat bone width. Yeah, that one very important. I never really measure my seat bone width, but I've been riding on 140 to 143 mm. Um, that's a, quite a typical saddle uh, measurement, right? Uh, I don't, I, I cannot ride for, for long, really. Mm. And even for like starting of the ride, uh, I really feel like a pain in my central crotch area, mm. that perennial bones. Uh. So I tried 155 on my, I, I bought a Brooks saddle, 155. I felt immediate comfort when I sat on it. So uh, I rode it for a while and then I transferred it to my marine bike. It's still performing well. So after I got this bike, I told myself, I got to get rid of that Brooks saddle. The fella weighed about I think six seven hundred gram if I'm not wrong. Mm. Them heavy man for yeah, saddle. Yeah, heavy. Yeah, so I look around for a lightweight saddle lah. Uh, don't talk about the 3D printer yet lah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Have you tried it? Uh, no, but okay. I think this is good. You know, this one for three one hundred forty three gram. Yeah. Mm. So full carbon and I got it at the steel lah on internet lah. Mm. Somebody got the I think that 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 young chap was riding a. Uh, S work bench or S work it oh it toss it toss mm, yeah so he had this on the bike but he sold this away he got the 3D printed one oh. so good, good damn good price ah cannot resist lah <laughs> on the spot I went down to Ferro Park and bought it for me <laughs> what what is the the price of the current build right now of this bike uh, just a uh, a tad more than six lah a tad more than yeah, six yeah. okay uh, it's expensive lah for the gravel but I feel lah yeah, yeah. Um, it's okay as long as you're happy with it. Uh, you ride your bike. Yes. Right. And power. Uh, you don't have a power meter. I uh, no. Why? Were you trying to get one? Or yeah, Favero. Favero. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow? Eh, no, no tomorrow. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably next year lah. Bonus maybe. Uh, oh, okay, uh, okay. And let's talk about accessories. You tell us more about the lights you have. I think this is the Moon Moon something. Yeah, this right? is the Moon MX. I I got this like a couple of months back too. Uh, because you know it like sits flush with the handlebar it looks very sleek and you can mount your computer also. yeah it can mount all the different brands Garmin, Wahoo even this Zoss China one also can mount mm. yeah it's integrated la, so I like it la. do you have a real light? sorry? do you have a real light? a uh, real light just this normal X, extra light or what? Uh, yeah this okay. other one Okay. Uh, because and I like my rear end to be very clean. Clean. Yes. Then you can buy the. I can't specialize. They have that two bolts I at know, the bottom, right? That, Once you get the. Them, uh, them ugly, sure. What the heck? I feel so oh, offended. Oh, you are using <laughs> it. Oh, sorry, I did personal preference. I, I wanted to get that initially, okay? Uh, some somebody selling it lah. But then uh, when I realized, I, I I saw someone using it. Why is like it's it's like sticking out a bit, right? Yeah. Uh, not really lah. It's flush, right? Flash man? Yeah. Maybe I haven't seen in real life. <laughs> uh, but that one uses USB charging and I actually face some issues charging it, so I don't want to go there, but yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then you have XOSS. How is it pronounced? Zos? Zos, yeah. Okay. I pronounce it as Zos. Why why not Garmin? Uh, you know, Wahoo. No, I'm actually looking at Wahoo. I uh, almost got a Wahoo uh, mm. last last month. But I mean the deal it fell through lah, so right. yeah. Probably end of the year, lah. See how. Wahoo, is it? Wahoo, yeah. Why not Garmin? Oh, <laughs> the looks. I uh, know. I heard some cons about Garmin because okay, previously I, I was riding bikes all along, lah. So I had a Garmin GPS before. Uh, it's not a perfect GPS like any other products, but I think I just want to try a different brand, lah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what else should we talk about? Okay, last but not least, the frame, uh, performance. You say it's comfortable. Yeah. Can you go fast on flats with this? Can you climb because it's 9.9 kilograms? Pros and cons about this bike. Okay, um, this is definitely not a climbing bike. And this is definitely not the bike for speed. 
uh, what I like about this bike a lot is actually just the comfort. Uh. It's, it's hard to explain uh, until someone tries riding, uh, I mean, uh, a good steel bike or rather a good titanium bike or you know a carbon bike. You know, every different materials have different characteristics, right? And where they shine, okay? Mm -hmm. Like this one, yes, it provides you that comfort. But in terms of power transfer, it's not as good as carbon, definitely. And it's not as good as titanium. Because these two materials are definitely stiffer than steel. Steel flex more. Yeah, so it provides you that, that bit more of comfort. Yeah, so there's sacrifices here and there. Lah. So at the end of the day, it boils down to what you want actually. Yeah, can I, for, sorry, can I ask one roasting question? Sure, sure, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm roasted. <laughs> what is the longest distance you've done on the bike? Because you talk about comfort, right? Ah, uh, yeah. What's the longest you've done? I think one... 140 or 130 and you're okay after that long ride or you still have aches no um with this okay i, I did a bike fit myself lah. i don't have any aches it's just that you know for me time is precious lah. like i said i got two small kids and i always got to be back home hmm. so i don't have like the luxury of three four hours outside and then relax drink kopi <laughs> go back just call my wife hey i'm coming back nah, no no such thing <laughs> yeah. so so no uh, super time long rides lah. and everything is time yeah, yeah. So actually, you want to go fast, right? You put your wife's face here. Like hey, one of the interviews I did, he has his kids there and everything. And then you put your wife's face here every time. It's like, wow, shit, need go home. Already. My wife's going to wake up. I think the bike will feel heavier. <laughs> 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 hey, but my wife is a cyclist as well. I mean, casual cyclist. Lah. Okay. Yeah, so but you can't, both of you can't ride at the same time. Cause no one cannot, because she's kids. office hour and I'm on shift. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay. So my riding hours are weird. Lah, all lah. Right. Yeah. Uh, any dislikes about the bike and... Um, any future upgrades? I mean, you said Favero, Garmin. Yeah, Favero, Wahoo. Wahoo sorry. Yeah, Favero, Wahoo. Actually, I would like to change out. Uh, I know this is quite controversial. I mean, after all the money I've spent on this bike. What's PW? No. No? This is already a gravel specific uh, rear derailleur. Mm. It's already very low. Already. If OSPW, you go oh, even yeah, lower because yeah, yeah. My, my rear cassette is the uh, SRAM XG1195, the race cassette. Mm. This is uh, 1042. So it's quite big already. Mm. Anyway, I don't need uh, Controversial, let me think. What are you going to upgrade? Huh? Let me think, let me think. Can't think of anything, man, that's controversial besides the first PW. <laughs> no, no, actually, I wanted a lightweight. Okay, the brand is Niner. So, this is my aim. La. My aim, I wish to bring the weight down to 9 kg flat. So, that's almost 1 kilogram. Uh, you, you yes, yeah. correct. What, what are you going to do? So, what was the upgrade that you said? Uh, we said group set. You uh. said group set. I'm actually looking at SRAM Red or SRAM Force. One bike and a light, a light wheel set. Light wheel set, there's pretty much a lot la, out there. Yeah, whether the China brands, even China brands are not good. But for gravel wheel set, can you get a very light one? Gravel. Are yeah, you uh, looking at gravel, right? Yeah, gravel. Oh, I, I know Envy, they, they do good gravel rims, la, but also for Envy pricing. La. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I don't think it's very light, is it? Uh, not that, I think it's about 1.6. Hmm. Uh, but the the I'm eyeing a wheel set that weighs about one below one point four one point three to one point four would be perfect la, for my road riding. Mm. This will be convert this will be used purely for gravel or off road because this is damn solid, mm. damn strong. Mark my words, if you continue riding for the next couple of years, you will be owning a carbon road bike. It won't be this. You look back at this video and you'll be laughing at yourself. Titanium road bike. I don't know, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, okay, okay. I've tried the SL7. Uh, my brother's friend. Don't tell me 100 meters around, only uh, around the park. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We went to us, to us and back. Oh, okay. I flew, bro, on that bike. Exactly, right? So, what, what's holding you back? <laughs> Don't tell me comfort. Because you only ride 140 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> I know, la, maybe maybe one day. La, but uh, the next step up will be titanium first. La. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whether it's a road bike or gravel bike, it will be an all-road bike. Mm. Okay. I, I wouldn't jump into, I wouldn't dive into road bike yet. Mm. Just somewhere in the middle first. Okay. And all road would be good. I want to, I, I would prefer to run 32 or 30 the lowest. Uh, purely for comfort. Lah. No. <laughs> it will be definitely lower. Okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm, people call me old school. I still run 25. I've done 21. Mm. I feel that the, 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 weak, the white one obviously is much more comfortable. This tub, to, uh, tubeless, tubeless, tubeless yep. right? It's like a, like a sofa, man. Very bouncy. I, I don't, the, not, the, not me. Yeah, maybe you're used to that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody will have different preference, yeah, right? Yeah. And the, the kind of road input that you get from the bus and stuff, yeah. Mm, okay. I do agree with that. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
last one I want to talk about is your attire. Some people always ask me, hey, ask the guy what does he wear and stuff. Uh, pedal Mafia? Ah, uh, yes. And beeps, what beeps are these? Uh, these are Pedal Mafia beeps as well. Okay. Uh, these are the change beeps. Uh. Uh, no, I love this because it's a cargo beep. Oh. Uh, I like to keep my bike looks clean. So with the cargo beeps, I got my, uh, yeah, uh, my power gel. I got my mini pump inside. And wow. the rest will be inside my case lah, that Is you saw just now. On, on the, on the, you put it on your thighs, right? Mm. The, there's pockets in there. Does it restrict or do you feel like there's something like bothering you at thighs? Uh, no, you, you don't put anything that is like a boxy or what lah. It's something slim lah. Maybe, for example, a pen or, you know, like all this power gel. No, you can hardly see it lah. It's oh. actually a pump inside here. I'm self-sufficient. Anything happen to me. Is this a Lazine one? I think I have this one. Yeah. I have this one, man. This is the same one I have, the pocket yeah. drive or something, right? Yeah, pocket drive, yes. I like it because it's small. It's very small. But I need to warn you, um, you know, the hose, right? Uh-huh. Leaking. The funny thing is, every time I bring all this, right, my friends never bring pumps. Every time they puncture, I have to give them a pump. <laughs> and I never use it for myself. So every time I use them, like people, because it's not the answer, right? They simply pump and everything. This hose, as you, you plug it in here, right? It's very fragile, so mine broke here right at the tip because if, if they, they pump it like that right okay do, do, do you do, do, do you turn that nozzle first onto the valve ah, correct so i learned the hard way i used to do this first and put it in oh no don't so do that so i did this first and then yes. i put this in but because sometimes you are in the middle of a ride and then people all staring at you want to go fast you know a hey, faster finish up right they tend to poke all the way, all everywhere and then it breaks here so oh, there's okay. one time right uh it was on one of my vlogs <laughs> we were pumping somebody's tire and we realized hey why there's no air going in and we kept doing it so many leaking. times. It's leaking here because the hose broke already. All PG-18 people watching. No air. <laughs> and I have to give credit to Kelvin from Bike Settlement because I bought it from him and he was like, hey, uh, bro, come over. I'll just, he just, he literally took one new one and he just gave me this. Serious. So I, I only needed this and because they don't sell this, right? So. To all you guys who are watching, just be very careful if you're using this kind of pump. Thanks, Kevin. If mine broke, I'll come to you. <laughs> oh shit, he's probably saying, why did, why did he mention me? Not everybody's coming to my shop and, and, and taking my hose, but not buying the pump. <laughs> uh, why yeah. did you carry a CO2 canister? But now the I know, I actually. have CO2 canister as well. Mm. I'm well prepared. I'm pragmatic. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had to any issues with tubeless? Like, Punctures and okay, tubeless. ever since I went tubeless, I've never had any punctures. Actually, almost a year already I went tubeless. Mm. I mean, touch wood, lah, zero punctures. Lah. Mm. And mind you, I, I, I do go into Mandai all this. Mm. But of course, I, I, I brought down the, temp, the pressure to... Okay, when I go Mandai on my 32C tyres, I brought the, the, the pressure down to 33, 35. 33 front, 35 rear, tubeless. Wow, so low. Yeah, it, it was okay. So once I exited Bukit Panjang, I went to Bukit Timah on the road, right? I just pumped it back to 55-60. That was my pressure previously, la. on the road, 55-60. Uh, I, I know having a, man, a tubeless, you need to maintain by pumping sealant regularly. Not regularly, maybe or every six months. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if, if for that particular two, three months is very hot, then I'll top up every two to three months. La. How do you top up? How does it uh, Sorry, I, I have don't the, I have so. the syringe at home. So I'm going to I'll remove the valve over here, mm. uh, put it by the side. La. Mm. I only do it once. La. Mm. I'll remove the valve and then I'll inject that thing, just top it up. Oh. Do you have to clear whatever that's inside first or you just keep pumping it in? No need, just pump back only. <laughs> uh, because uh, ever since I own this bike, mm. I told myself that uh, since I love this bike a lot, I service it like maybe twice or once a year at least. Mm. So I just service this in December, eh, was, it, was it December? No, no, uh, March, uh, March this year. Just a bit full service. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Last question from me is uh, noted that you have everything titanium bolts. Oh yeah. <laughs> what titanium bolts are these? And uh, I'm going to assume also because you want to get it to nine kilograms. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. This reminded me of the situation last week. I was uh, traveling, right? Uh huh. So uh, my I I am too cheap lah. So I didn't want to buy check in baggage. So okay. I, I carry my uh my my baggage into the the flight. I chuck everything inside. I didn't bother weighing it. So there was a seven kilogram weight limit on Jetstar. And the okay. uncle was there waiting for me to weigh it. I was like, shit, die this time. <laughs> I weighed it, right? And then it was like 13 kg. And then the guy looked at me, 13 kg, I cannot help you. If eight also, I can help you, but this 13 is almost double. And then I was like, okay, okay, wait, wait. Let me go to the toilet. So you know what I did? I went to the toilet. I tried to change my clothes. <laughs> I wear all my heavy clothes and everything. Uh -huh. And then I went back. And then they weighed it. Still 13 kgs. 
So this reminds me of you <laughs> changing your titanium bolts, but did it make any difference? Uh, yeah, it went down 194 uh, or 204 gram, uh, I think, yeah. I it, say about 200 gram. I completely changed all the bolts to titanium. But relatively, that's not a lot, right? For a 9 kilo. That's not? Is it a lot? I, I, I don't know. Not a lot, la. not yeah. a lot. La. So was it because of weight that you wanted titanium bolts? Or was it more like uh, rust yeah. protection? It's and... partially on, on route to going 9 kilo. La. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. just just change out this frame, man. Uh, After this interview, this will be on Carousel. You know, already. you you are just like my elder brother. <laughs> Every time he texts me, ah, uh, it be something about carbon bikes. Yeah. Every time, and then my friends, carbon. <laughs> Literally everyone around me, they are all carbon, <laughs> and they cannot stop no teasing me. Hey, change carbon bike lah, change carbon lah. I yeah. said, no lah, no lah. I won't, I won't lah. I'll, I'll, I'll follow you guys lah, but I I follow them lah. Can no still la. can keep up. No issue lah bro, it's the legs ultimately that matters. <laughs> so means you are the strongest rider amongst all of them because they're all on lighter bikes, they no probably don't put as much effort as you. No lah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that lah. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay, uh, look look at it from a different perspective. Uh. I, I ride this bike for maybe like what you said, maybe after this I'll be so tempted to change to a road bike, maybe carbon bike like you said. At least for all this one, two years, uh, I've been training on this bike. Uh, I mean, I've been training my strength. You know? I, I need, never really measure my FTP or whatever lah, but I feel that I'm stronger, lah. Mm. Definitely, yeah. And these are all—they're all welded joints, right? Yeah. They're so seamless. Because it's Reynolds at eight five three. No, no, but but you see the new specialized Alex Spring. <laughs> what what's what's up with that? I mean, <laughs> I mean, comparatively, right? Look at this—it's it's almost as like it's like. I I, I did not say anything about specialized or SO lah, because for all I know, Ali, like you said. Tomorrow or end of the year, I get one specialized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, look at the wells. It's, look at the contrasting difference, right? This one is almost like a carbon bike. Okay, I, I've never ridden are... a good quality aluminum, but that's an alu bike, right? Uh, I've never ridden a good quality alu bike. La. For, I mean, furthermore, with that kind of welding, which is odd looking, uh, uh, probably after I ride it, then I can comment. La. But other than that, purely visual wise, uh, it does look a bit funny, la, but. Mm. Specialized being specialized, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, a bit running out of time, almost 40 minutes. Oh, gosh. So let's go to the IG questions. We move on to the IG questions, Q&A. You guys want to ask your questions, follow me on Instagram and then you can submit the questions via my IG story. So Is, you ready? Ready. First question. Is steel real? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> you have to ride it to to feel it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I know you you mentioned this a lot of time. Uh, my friend Josh, who we were just talking about the specialized. Uh, he owns the specialized Ale Sprint LTD with ugly welts. Sorry to say that, uh. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. But his question to you: Is the right comfort of steel really great or overhyped? Okay. In all honesty, it is really good. Yeah, because you know steel flexes a lot, but again the right i mean the good steel and the low end steel it differs quite a bit yeah just for info because i've ridden uh i wouldn't say lousy steel uh, an unbranded steel compared to a tenji steel compared to a columbus zona compared to this Reynolds 853 the two outstanding steel materials i would say is the columbus zona and this Reynolds 853 I even tried the Columbus Spirit yeah, because a lot of Angmaw swear by Columbus Spirit. Yep. So yeah, it does it does differ a lot. A lot of Angmaw swear by, but what does the Singaporean swear by? Singapore swear by carbon. <laughs> <laughs> so you Angmaw lah. <laughs> no, la. <laughs> not on carbon, bro. <laughs> okay, next question. Why not full hydraulic brakes? And will you go for full hydraulic brakes? Yes, I'm on the way to full hydraulic brakes. I want to get rid of this um, brake setup. La. Yeah, to, I, I, I believe that TRP brakes are uh, uh, quite heavy as well. But performance is okay, right? It's just you're yeah, talking about weight only. Performance is okay, yeah, because I'm on my way to 9 kg, so yeah, slowly. Is this heavier than hydraulic brakes? If the housing is heavy, is it? No, because this is SRAM uh, Rival. So, Rival is like the, if I'm not wrong, is the lowest Altigra range. 105. Or 105, yeah, mm. I think it's 105. Mm. Yep. So it's not that light lah. Right. But it does what it is lah. Mm. Yeah, it does what it does lah. No, we briefly talked about the handlebar. So the question is interesting drops. How does it feel having the grooves? And very shallow drops. Yeah, it's very shallow drops because right. uh, I, I, I need that control when I go off-road back then. 
So uh, this one provided all that control and that ergo groove uh, actually provided that additional comfort when you're on the drops. Uh. I mean, I don't go drops throughout the entire Bukit Timah or off-road mm. course. Most of the time I'm on top, but when I do go, it provides that additional comfort. Uh. Mm. And it's carbon, uh, so right. it's short. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can this bike keep up with the roadies? You said you kept up with your friends. Okay, you Are there any times where you struggle to keep up? I know. I mean, de depends. Uh, you, how. What, what kind of roadies lah? Because most of my friends, they are all really fast. Yeah. Uh, so, um, if I do purely TMCR, probably I can do average like 29, 30. Mm. Yeah. You very fast friends, right? Yeah, my friends are all very fast. Can Go. nominate someone to come here next? <laughs> <laughs> you shout out to that person, your friend. Oh gosh. He, they are probably watching your video now, uh, judging you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got a lot of friends. I don't know. Uh, th th this new friend that I just got to know, probably uh, shout out to you, Falik. Falik. Uh, yeah, you always fly, right? They call you the super fly, right? Right. Oh, what Come the bike does he ride? Man. I think Cervelo S5. The one with the triangular bar in the middle. Is that I the one? think so. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Falik, ah. Uh? Yeah, Falik. Falik, your next, ah. Uh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Sorry, you done with that that question? Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Very interesting question, uh, probably the, the last one. What is this crankset? So one by uh, Absolute Black Oval. Mm -hmm. This guy is really interested to convert to a one by setup. What is the tip that you can give to him? Because he wants to convert. Okay, he wants to convert for road bike or for gravel bike? Uh, that's did, maybe did he mention? No, I don't know. I don't know whether he's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just explain briefly. Lah. If for road biking you want to go one by, I mean, there are riders who go one by, uh, you need to know what is the comfortable uh, gearing for you. Like for me, I actually did some calculation lah, uh, before I got the 46 tooth chainring. Yeah, because it, uh, most of them, when they go one by on a gravel setup, I think it's about, they, they will go for 39, 40, 41, 42 max. Yeah, but I'm going 46. Yeah, so I went 46 because I want that speed on descent and on flats. I don't want to be you know, over pedaling like hamster. No, I don't want that. So for this one, I, might, I can get a good cadence like between 90 to 100. Yep. So for if, but if you're talking about off-road, right, going gravel or going steep climbs, then going 39 to 42 is a good size. Mm. Yep. Um, then when you buy a one by setup, is there a limitation to the cog size of the cassette? Yeah, the jump is not as refined lah, because mm. I know for uh, road group sets, right, they actually jump minimal. So it's actually good for you to regulate your change of gears and stuff. But for this one, it just jump, it does jump a bit more lah. Mm. Uh, but for me, I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah. So long I can go fast, can I? <laughs> <laughs> we all want to go fast. Yeah. Uh, that's all the questions. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much again for coming. Hey, Anything no, you pleasure. want to tell your friends, anyone who's watching this video, any tips for them? Uh, your closing remarks. <laughs> if anyone is watching until uh, this uh, mark, it's, uh, 40 minutes. Not, nothing much actually, but uh, for those of you out there who want to start cycling or is already cycling, carry on doing what you're doing because remember at the end of the day or at the end of your life you know that health is indeed wealth well said sorry there's no audience here to applause but I'll applause maybe some no people problem. out there from HDB watching there's somebody somebody's watching Chobu there uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey my wife watches this video la. later she will come here and say what the hell is this <laughs> <laughs> what is going on <laughs> okay well okay. thank you so much hey, and, no uh, problem, Falik right Ah, Falik, yeah, Falik. <laughs> Sorry, bro, I had to nominate you because you dropped me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, thank you so much. This is a tale, sworn in a sight.